Let's do it. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty sh- You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels two, good, like... Come on, play. Play. Jordan's blaming CK because he didn't bench Trubisky in the Madden scene. All right. Is that what go. it was? Or bench uh, Pickett? Yeah. Or you didn't bench uh, Pickett, yeah. All right. I got it. Jordan believes that, too. Are we supposed to be hearing something? Because we you don't. hear it? No, no, no. His ass needs to get. What yeah, we start. Show this for us. The defense sucked ass. You hear it now? Worse, they sucked yep. the inside of an ass. Worse than that, they sucked the inside of an ass filled with dog shit and whatever nastiness else you could shove mm-hmm. inside that ass. Keith Trailer, his ass needs to get. Out I like of this how fucking people are calling him Keith Trailer. Take this coaching staff with <laughs> the wheel. No fight, anything. And fuck the Steelers, man. Fuck this whole team. And fuck all y'all wanting to say, we ain't going to go to the playoffs. We ain't going to win the division. They ain't going to win no division. Can Oh, people, you're going to beat yourself, man. Now, what's the draft legs with? Out of a running for a quarterback, came in and get the out of a position to get a top defensive player. Man, fuck this shit, man. It's bullshit. Tough game, man. Uh, you know, it's just like the the Seattle game. I told you I wasn't gonna get any hope or get excited about this team unless we beat Seattle. Is that like because you were gonna come on here after the Seattle game and say, Oh, there's all this mathematical probability or opportunity where we can make the playoffs there's still hope there's still whatever and if we would have lost to seattle i would have been just like just been so fatigued by those conversations this is a punch in the gut right here this is an opportunity for us to win and to seize the day to seize the opportunity seize the moment to take uh our own destiny into our hands and now we're going to be in that conversation that I was hoping where that I was happy we avoided last week or the last two weeks, which is just, or last week, which is, Oh, there's a possibility. Greg's over there right now watching. Well, if Tampa, if whatever, and the guy that came on uh, Mark Bergen, who we had on the show, Cody, this past week on the beat check, he said he was rooting for the entire NFC South to finish six and 11, every single team and chaos to break out and that's it like happen. it might happen it's impossible Can you imagine is it possible i think no i think it is possible right no everybody's got five wins in the division and um, then everybody could have one win more right no and there's lose three all games. Their games no because they're playing divisional games at the end of the game end of the year no we all have uh one outside one the, one outside, but the, everybody has one inside the division as well, which means, for instance, if uh, if Tampa Bay beats us, but we beat the Saints, well, Tampa Bay will have six or seven wins, and the Saints will have uh, six wins. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or, like, they'll have five, but let's say that the Saints beat the Falcons, they'll have six. Somebody's going to at least have seven. It's impossible mathematically for somebody to have less than, yeah, less than seven. I hope right. somebody figure out if it's mathematically possible. That would be awesome if it was. But, Greg uh, is talking and you're muted. And you're muted. We're playing like the, uh, this show's yeah. going right now like the Panthers game. It's full if, of errors. If Tampa Bay loses out, Carolina wins out. Let's see. New Orleans and Atlanta already played each other today, so they're not playing each other again. And both no, of those that's teams... not what we're asking, though, Greg. No, listen, that's what I'm saying. To, okay. to get to six and eleven, like think about it. Uh, uh, New Orleans won today. The they played. That was their last conference game against. I mean, uh, I mean, other that puts them at five wins. So if New Orleans wins two more games, they have six wins. If Atlanta wins two more games, they have six wins. 
If Carolina wins two more games, they have six wins. And if New Orleans, if, if Tampa Bay loses out, they have game. six wins. So, yeah, you're right. One more. So, it, it's it's possible. Well, actually, maybe I'm, I need to. Mm, I'm going to go back and look at this. It's possible. Dude, I, I was never good at math. I know I'm yeah. not figuring this shit out. Look, I'm labeling this section this. crying fans, though, based on the call. So like, yeah. Hey, can I, can I say this? To all of those in the chat and on Twitter who say, oh, the Carolina Panthers have to take a quarterback. They have to take a quarterback. Quarterback was not the reason why we lost this game <laughs> today. Agreed. Agreed. Dude, I would love to have another badass defense lineman added to this defensive line. I would love to have another badass linebacker added to the middle of our defensive backfield. Like another the fact, like, like, like do, do, yeah. to, uh, whatever, man, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to reach on whatever quarterback is there just because everyone has bought into this notion that we absolutely have to have a quarterback. Like, no, our defensive line needs a lot of fucking help. Our, our defensive backfield Needs a lot of fucking help. Brian Burns and Derek Brown cannot be the only two decent players on our defensive line. That is never going to be a, a consistent team on defense. You need another, uh, like Carl Van says, you need another defensive tackle. You need another defensive end. Hell, we need another cornerback. I, I, I feel. I think we need another linebacker. We have other needs that we need to fill out. And I'm not just going to go and jump for whatever, uh, you know, project quarterback they're telling us to to take a chance on. I think that is dumb. Uh, Panthers have a lot of holes. A lot of holes. They got a long way to go. Um, and you know what? If you could go, you might be getting that. Uh, you might have another season like this in store for you. You know, to be honest, like, is that if you're thinking about what the reality of rebuilding a team in the wake of a new coach and stuff is going to be, um, you might be a little bit farther away than you think sometimes. The number is 252-228-5098. What a shit show this was. The defense oh, that's sucked the same, call. same call. God, I'm struggling today. <laughs> Yo. That's good, C3. This is JD, 864. Uh, what, minute 55 left in the game. And, um, yeah, this, this, this has been, uh, defense not able to get off the field on third down and offense, um, not being able to sustain drives. I, I like the fight, right? That, that little chippiness and shit. I, I like how the, the, the guys out there, they, they, ain't, they ain't about to let anybody push them around, but, uh, Disappointing loss. Um, yeah, disappointing loss, but we still got three games left to go. Still can make some noise. Uh, we know what the NFC South looks like right now, so disappointing loss, but you still in it. All in all, regardless, keep on it. All right. Uh, uh, JD, always glass half full, seeing some some good things. He lives in paradise, folks, so, I mean – course he's going to be optimistic about the world the chippiness of this team and fighting a little bit at the end i guess at the Maybe. beginning really yeah. yeah you're right um it, it did seem it seemed like this team was upset with themselves at least with uh, some of the players that missed some opportunities and shaq thompson uh some guys you know you saw them banging their frustration a little bit but frustration and the fact that they cared about the moment they weren't defeated mentally they just beat up out there um, and exhausted now it's kind of shameful in so many ways uh, and like our super chatter said here check this out is uh first i'd like to thank you guys we got uh dot dot was a new member we uh that came and, and jumped on during uh the beat check this past week and then this comment right here can you bring up the super chat code let me see if i can do it uh, sir detail. detail five dollars said someone needs to speak uh to this literally being a Steelers home game, and it's shameful, Cody. It's shameful that you look into the stands and, man, the Steelers travel well. We all knew yeah. this was going to be like this, yeah. but it fills me with shame. Well, I, I said that on Tuesday. I said of all the teams that come to Carolina, I think that's the biggest fan base that shows up, and generally when they get here, there's more Steelers fans than Carolina fans, and it proved itself today. Like, they travel well, and – 
you know, we, we mentioned it when we were talking in the game too, like Carolina is still a relatively young franchise. I know we're almost to the point where we can't really say that anymore, but at the same time, our parents growing up and even messed to me to a certain extent, you grew up either a Redskins, a Falcons or a Steelers fan because yeah. they were the three closest teams around here, you know? So, well, maybe not Steelers, but I know a lot of Steelers fans in this area. Well, they had a two, they've had a lot of success, but it is <laughs> shameful to not see that um stadium full of blue blue yeah. but i mean it's like i think if we stood out stronger like to me this is not like how it has to be i've seen you were supposed to pick up my, i was stronger. laying it out there for you cody that was the setup of setups what well, i missed it i said shameful to... like 12 times oh Oh, you know me. I rode the short bus when I went to school. So, but no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Sometimes you got to spell things out for me. And sometimes uh, what we actually have to do is spell things out very clearly for these Panther fans. Uh, you know, they're already kind of feeling shame due to what this Panthers team did. So, I mean, we might as well just uh, continue the shame train here. And let the conductor do his thing. Big Papa, get on these shameful souls. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Panthers fans, or maybe Steelers fans, you've come here to talk about the Carolina Panthers' disappointing outing against the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. The first home loss Steve Wilkes has endured. But you haven't hit that like button yet. You haven't hit that subscribe, that notification bell. I have one thing to say to all you absolute freaks. Subscriber shame. Man, we have 169 nice people watching. We got 52 thumbs up. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell for every single time the C3 Panthers podcast goes live. You know you need us, man. You have more fun watching than you do watching pathetic ass Panthers. Let the Pittsburgh Steelers whip their ass up and down the field. Tony Dunn, let's do some more calls or whatever we got next. Yep, that'll do it. They just made that field go to make an 11 point game. 